So here's the problem, boy. I picked a couple of people out of the audience to come down here to do the start of the show, and the lady who I picked out, who's the mom of the guy, who's the, you know, the guy that I picked out, well, she's a little bit cheeky. <laughs> I said to her, hello, what's your name? And she said her name, and then I, and then she said to me, and you are? <laughs> That was like, uh -huh, I'll cut a bitch, you know. <laughs> so, anyway. <laughs> anyway, everything will be out fine. You just check them for weapons, and then I'll be over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Please, when I tap you on the shoulder, state your name and where you're from. Uh, my name is Rob, and I'm from Toronto, Canada. A Canadian, eh? Yes. And my name's Linda, and I'm from Toronto, Canada. I see. Canadians. <laughs> I should have known. <laughs> so, my Canadian friends, first of all, let me ask you, big fella, how'd you feel about Bart Simpson? You know what I mean. Okay. Okay. Good. What are you guys, uh, you, you know each other? Yes, we're related. Ah. He's my son. Oh, that's that lovely. Would make me his his mother. mother. Yes, I've got it. We have a very similar <laughs> system in the United okay. States. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, here's uh, my question. I'm going to ask you a question, right? Okay. And then if you get the question right, or even if you get it wrong, but it would help if you got it right, we'll send you to a swanky restaurant for free where you can. Yeah, what is it? Is it about hockey? Because we know all about hockey in Canada. It, it might be a little bit about okay. hockey, if you want. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> this is the pushiest Canadian I've ever met. <laughs> all right. Here's your question. If you get this correct, you will go to a swanky restaurant. And if you get it wrong, you will right, still go. Um, who is the current mayor of Toronto? <sighs> Rob Ford. How's that working out, smartass? <laughs> We're sending you to Craig's Restaurant. Craig's is really good one. Craig's Restaurant. Lovely Canadians. We'll be right back, everybody. Sponsored by Energizer Ultimate Lithium. That's positive energy. Ladies and gentlemen, Craig Ferguson. It's a, not only a great day in America, it's a great day for baseball. Do you enjoy the baseball, Jeff? I love the baseball. But it's America's pastime. It is indeed. Did you ever play baseball? I did. I played with a lot of balls in my day. Yes, I have. <laughs> Base, baseball. Were you, when you were uh, playing baseball, were you a pitcher or did you do the catcher? I was a catcher. <laughs> <laughs> 11th 30, here we come. Uh -huh. Hi, hi. You know what, there's a, a, there's a growing movement. <laughs> there's a growing movement to make baseball's opening day a national holiday. Of course, some people already take the day off for opening day. They're called the Houston Astros. <laughs> oh, oh, and that was tonight's sports joke. Play the graphic.
I'm really sorry about that. I... But take, why do we have to have the 80s kind of Top Gun music as well? How am I do the danger zone? <laughs> Hey, it's, you know what it's a great day for? Not just the Houston Astros, but um, uh, vegetarians. Vegetarians, yeah. Yeah, yeah. A new study says that being vegetarian is the best way to lower your high blood pressure. I'm thinking about doing it. I did it before. In the 1990s, I was a vegetarian for a short time. I enjoyed the, uh, uh, the mental clarity, the increased level of energy, until I smelled a bacon sandwich at Glasgow Airport. <laughs> Then I made my choice. <laughs> the product uh, pretty much says, that the, the study says that vegetarians live longer, but that's just because meat eaters' lives get shortened from being harassed by angry vegetarians. <laughs> what do we want? Less meat. How much do we want it? <laughs> Soy bad. <laughs> Soy, yeah, oh, yeah, soy, I words. see what you did. Yeah, you made so into soy. Yeah, kind of mixing it up, putting oh, it. Hey. Oh, man. Yeah, that's, the, that's a comedy thing right there. 11.30, 11.30. Yeah. Right there, yeah. Look out, Seth. <laughs> anyway, vegetarians... <laughs> Vegetarians aren't the only people finicky about staying healthy and being thin. They have, they have a name for these kind of people that like to be thin and healthy. What are they called again? Uh, single people. <laughs> Once you're married, it doesn't matter. I do want fries. <laughs> <laughs> I've had vegetarians say they don't eat anything with the face, so that rules out uh, beef, pork, and Bruce Jenner. But vegans... <laughs> oh, that? Who oh, me? Oh, man. Oh, oh who me? Oh, let me just wait. Am I the one doing the... No! No, don't try and clap your way out of this, you bastard. No, 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 we, no, we didn't do you. Ah, you heard me. You heard me. Last night's audience slapped me with the last one. You heard me. You heard me. <laughs> what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, vegans. Right, vegans. Right, right. Vegans don't eat any animal products at all. No milk, no eggs, not even a tasty ferret steak. And... <laughs> Core vegans even avoid honey because of the very small. No, I'm gonna. I'm really enjoying myself here. I've thought yeah, of something. Yeah, yeah. I thought of a joke. Hardcore vegetarians avoid honey because of the small number of bees that are accidentally killed in the production of honey. Now you know what beekeepers call these incidents? Honey boo boos. I thank you. Yeah. I thank yeah. you. There you go. Now give me a lot. I mean, it's not. All, it's not on the same caliber as soy bad, no, but no, it's no, all right. It's really, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, you can't, you can't tell a vegan just by looking at them. I'll prove that to you with a new game. Guess who's not the vegan? <laughs> Let's play! <laughs> Jim Parsons! Jim Parsons, thin, healthy, not a vegan. <laughs> Take that, Seth. <laughs> <laughs> that should be our new catchphrase, like shouldn't I like it? That. Take that, Seth. He's like, what? <laughs> anyway, I saw at the supermarket something called vegan burgers. And I'm thinking, really? Vegan, vegan burgers? That's kind of an oxymoron, unless they're burgers made from vegans. <laughs> vegans made of gold. <laughs> Craig, did you just do a callback to last night's monologue? You bet I did. Yeah. 11.30. How can you know for sure, studio audience, that I did do a call back to last night's monologue unless you were here last night? In gold! I I've confused myself now. Take that, Seth. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, that's that's good. Yeah, all right. You want to get us to a commercial? Sure, I'd love to. I'd love right. to. Tonight's program is brought to you by Vegan Burgers, the burgers made from real vegans taste the smug superiority. Just unbuttoning a little bit. I like to get a little bit informal. Yeah, loosen up, man. Yeah, you deserve it. Up. You deserve Unbuckle it. my pants a little take bit. Take them off. <sighs> take them off. You don't want to see anything that's in there. No. Come on. I don't want to frighten the Canadians. 
Come on, set your business on the table. Let's see what you got. Hey! Come on. Come on. I'm not doing that thing. I'm just cleaning up before I set yeah, my no, business on the table. I got it. I got it. It's good, this thing, isn't it? I like it. Do you like it? I don't think yeah. anyone else likes no, it but me, but I like it. How you doing there, fella? Yeah. Uh, no, I say that to you. Right, you you well, come I into my bar, and I clean, I'm cleaning the bar. I'm just kidding. I'm getting into character. I'm getting into character. Well, will you let me do the bartender yeah, light first? I'm go ahead. Jeez. How you doing there, fella? Hey, hey I'm all right. Uh, the name's... Uh, so, no, no, excuse me a second. Yeah. I think I... I thought I heard the phone. Oh, well, you better get that phone. Excuse, excuse me. Hello, bar? Uh, yes, uh, hello, my name is Miriam. Miriam! Uh, I told you never to call here, you cranky old bitch! Uh, and you are? Holy mackerel! Miriam! Do you believe what that? Unbelievable! You the gall of that woman! I can't stand that the woman! Nerve. I cannot stand her! What a horrible woman! Uh, that, uh, that one more time, if that woman ever calls me ever again, I... Did you mean now? <laughs> Hello? I heard what you said, I'll cut oh, you. I I you. You to me like that. Miriam! <laughs> You don't have what it takes. <laughs> oh, dear. Made the crew laugh, Mario. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, our, uh, yeah. <laughs> welcome to the show that just gets more and more professional. <laughs> as each night passes, can primetime be far away? Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is from... Oh, no. Uh, what time is it, Jeff? It's street mail time. Time to take advice from a man who once smelled a bacon sandwich on the CBS lot, and the rest is history. <laughs> All right, let's do our own uh, Twitter jingle. Yeah, tonight. yeah. All right, All right you ready to go? Twitter time. Oh, yeah. This oh. Is, oh, 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 yeah. You remind me saying that sounds a little orgasmic. Yeah, it is. It is. Do it again. There's a little person touching me underneath this podium. Uh, that's enough. What, that's enough. Why Come not? on, man. I'm that's... trying to get my ass into prime time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 man. You're, you're yeah. a funny guy, man. Yeah, that's yeah, good. I know. That yeah. was good. This is from Ellie in uh, Cape May, New Jersey. I don't know if you can tell, she's a duck. Uh, that's nice. She says, Dear Craig and Jeff, do you ever sing with the band? Why, we often... Je uh, Alfredo, strike up a song. Me yeah. and Jeff will one, sing. One, two, one, two, three, hey! <laughs> Very easy, jolly good fellow. Very easy, jolly good fellow. <laughs> no, no, no. All right, that, that's enough, that's enough. We, jolly that, fellow, yeah. What? <laughs> the hell, what, what did he say? I don't know, what did you say? I said jolly fellow. I was just a little, little thing there. Hey. Yeah, no, it's good. <laughs> 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 If you don't know, I feel like I should tell you that the Alfredo and the Shy Fellows are the best band in late night, but they're too shy to come out from behind the curtain. <laughs> I wish time. That's a good one. <laughs> no boy. No boy. Uh, this is from Julie in Sandy Springs, Georgia. It says, Craig, uh, and she says some stuff. Uh, this is... <laughs> This is from Liz in Portland, Oregon. Oh, we've been there. Oh, yeah, good place. Ah, uh, was... What did we eat when we were there? We had, uh... Oh. Let I'm me sorry, try... I'm sorry about that. Oops. <laughs> the hell's going on back there? What was going on, Alfredo? This is my bad. I'm sorry. I, my, my penis uh, touched uh, the keyboard. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's all right. Okay. That's all right. It happens to me all the time. <laughs> wow. You know, any other show, they would they would stop down and cut that out. Right, but you no. know what? That would be dishonest, and that's not what you... Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This... Craig, is there a bug in your ass about something? <laughs> Yeah, I think so. No, no, everything's fine. Okay. What are you talking about, Ben? All right, uh, listen, Portland, Oregon. What did we have to eat when we went there? We had, uh, we had kale. We had some kale. Oh, yeah, kale. Yeah, that was sure. lovely, yeah. Uh, 
Uh, Liz says, uh, Craig, what do you recommend to conquer a fear of heights? Oh, stay in the ground. <laughs> yeah, the best advice. That's the yeah, best yeah. advice. Yeah, yeah. sit down. <laughs> this is from Carl in San Diego. He's a weird-looking guy, isn't he? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Oh boy. Uh, Carl says, uh, Craig, is Jeff dating anyone right now? No, not, not currently. I mean, I'm, I'm open to suggestions. Uh, are you attracted to emus? <laughs> Certainly uh, wouldn't mind watching him lay an egg or two. That's not a bad... Uh... Uh, and finally, this is from Dana in Athens, Georgia. <laughs> it says, Craig, I turned, down for a, I turned down a guy for a date, but now I've changed my mind. Can you tell Corey I'm actually interested in and to try again? What the hell is this? What do you think this is, man? What do you think this is? This is a professional late night story. I can't even say it. I can't say it. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, yeah, yeah, good times. <laughs> What's happening now? Well, this is the part where we uh, sort of figure out what the hell we're doing with the rest of the show. I say a commercial. Sounds good. Yeah, no, I, I say commercial. Yeah, sure. Do it. Tonight is a terrific actress. She's really good. She's she? very, very good. Yeah, I mean, really good. I know Super. that I say that about a lot of actresses, but she's really, she's exceptional. really good. Wow, she's the She's the best. 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 She stars on the show Blue and writes and directs Paloma, which is uh, premieres on Hulu on March the 28th. Uh, take a look at this. <laughs> Julia Stiles, everybody. Julia Stiles. You're such a gentleman. Well, you do. You look really lovely, very elegant and Thank sophisticated you. and beautiful. Black will do that. Yes. I think. I do it. So this is kind of blue, but... You, just, you, you, you know, the only reason I come on the show is because you flatter me every time. Really? Yes, so keep going. Ah, uh, well, uh, <laughs> your hair is very nice and you smell like biscuits. <laughs> okay, next. Um, <laughs> that clip looked riveting. I want... Did you write that? I did. That whole clip? Snowflakes. Yes. Um, How did you know my secret name? <laughs> Snowflakes. That sounds like your stripper name. It is. Anyway, look, um, you wrote... I, is this a departure for you? I haven't seen you do this before. Though. I wrote and directed the show Paloma. I had been working on Blue um, as an actress. It's, a, it's another show on the same channel. Right. Um, for two years, and when they asked me to come back, I was like, could I write and direct something for you? And so I wrote it. Um, it's about a girl who has a very flirtatious relationship with her boss. That gets her into trouble. It's kind of, it's kind of like a, a very. It's similar to girls, it's right? Not about and, relationships and, it, and dating. It is. She's not related in any way to Paloma Picasso. No. In any way. No. Have you ever met Paloma Picasso? No. I have. Tell me. I have met Paloma Picasso. <laughs> <laughs> and what did she say? What she did said, she do? Very nice to meet you, and moved on. She talks like that. I don't know. I can't remember. I was drunk. But anyway, look. The, <laughs> The, the thing is, I, I mean, I'm a big fan of Picasso, but Picasso's not in this, is, is No, he? no, no. It's just no. Uh, the girl's name is Paloma. Right. Well, I'm sure it'll be fine, but you, maybe you probably want to get Picasso in at some point. Okay, maybe next season. There are a lot of people in the world named Paloma besides Paloma Picasso. I had no idea. How many? Like five. Five? <laughs> <laughs> they all live in Spain. Really? Yeah. Now, is your, is your heroine Spanish? No. There's a, that's actually in the first season she explains that it was just that her parents wanted her to sound exotic. Ah. <laughs> that's my story too. I'm not really from Scotland. Like what would your what would your Spanish name be if it weren't if, if my name well Craig is a Gaelic name it means rock. So it actually means Peter. That's what my name would be in English. So translated into Pedro. Pedro, yeah. Okay. It would be Pedro. Oh, that was great. We did a thing there. <laughs> That was really good. We did, well, what about Julia then? What would that be? That's Julia. Huli, Huli, it's Julia, but Julia. 
Yeah, but that's 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 beautiful too. Thank you. Yeah. I saw Skywriting recently with I Love Julia in the Sky. Did you Shut see up. I no, did, you... I really did. Did you actually see it? I day? did, I see... saw it. Wait, oh, this is blowing my mind because I saw it too. Well, it was in the sky, Julia. <laughs> But of course, if you saw, so I was hiking in Los Angeles on one of my favorite trails, and it was Valentine's Day, and I saw, I was like so in my own head listening to music, and I looked up and I was like, oh, I heart such and such, and I was like, what are they gonna write? That's so cute. And then all of a sudden it was J, U, and I was like, shut up. Shut up, yeah. And they wrote, I heart Julia. Now, I'm not self-absorbed enough to think that it was for me. It was probably for Julia Ormond. Well, or. But, uh, I don't know, it made my day. Yeah, it was lovely. Are you a very romantic person? Yes. If you wanted to write my name in the sky, I heard that like uh, Uber cost, was charging $500 on Valentine's Day to do that. Craig, you could have just taken me out to dinner. Yes. Can we just I, pretend that it was for me? Yes, absolutely. I, I, I wish I'd thought of that. I, uh, you know, I thought the skywriting would have been more of a surprise, you know. <laughs> Plus, I'm a vegetarian now, I think. Or maybe that was last night. Look, <laughs> uh, whatever it is. Tomorrow you can be a vegetarian. Yeah, are you a vegetarian? I was for a really long time. Me too. And it, was it Glasgow Airport, the bacon roll? No. <laughs> no. You guys are into the weird stuff, uh, Cornish pasties? Yeah, well, that's not weird, Cornish it's weird. pasties. That's weird. not weird. Yeah, it's... that would make me a vegetarian. What, but, uh, that, why? It's just a sausage inside pastry. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, meat inside a pie is a good thing, I think. It only makes, oh, that makes me think of, like, Sweeney Todd and, like, the, the butchers that... Yes, the, yes, the, delicious, that... delicious. It all sounds delicious to meat me. Meat pies, no. Yeah, meat pies. You don't like meat pies? Do you like mint sauce? Yeah. Isn't that, like, a... That's mint like... sauce? Yeah, you have it with certain types of meat. No, no, no. No, like, mince, mince pies. Oh, mince pies. Yeah. That's not... That's, that's not, not mint sauce. That's... Mint sauce. Mince sauce. So like... I'm sorry, it's I... It's like a jelly... Just... <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking Excuse about? Excuse me a second. <laughs> yes, hello? Yeah, she's, yeah, yeah, she's, yeah, hello. You want to speak to Julia? I would love to. Okay, hold on. Oh, it's that old broad? Yeah. <laughs> on the old timey telephone, hello. Yeah. Hello, dear. Having uh, some trouble with your words today, are we? I hate that woman. She's so mean. Do you want me to stick up for you? Yeah. I will throw down. Throw down! You sound like a man. <laughs> wow. Wow. That was great. Yeah. There you go. Wow. <laughs> oh no, is sounding like a man a bad thing? Because I don't, so it's good, but... <laughs> if your name is Miriam, yeah. Yes, I guess, yeah. <sighs> I only did that for you. I'm not really not a mean person. Yeah, you didn't strike me as being mean at all. That was a lovely thing you did sticking out for me. I liked it. I, w I wish I had taken you out for dinner and put right sky lettering for you. I wish I did, of course. <laughs> Why were you out hiking? Do you have a dog? I don't have a dog. I actually don't even really live in LA. I live in New York, but I'm here temporarily. And I was, one of my favorite things to do is hike here. That's. Do you like to hike in New York? <laughs> There's nowhere to hike in. Yeah. New York. You walk up and down Central Park. You can hike flat. There's a lot of good walks. Well, do you do you, you can you can run you can run in Central Park sure. or, or go on a bicycle. Sure, I like to run. Or one of these old timey bikes with the one big wheel and the one little wheel. No, I would fall off of that. Oh, come oh. on, give it a try. <laughs> have you ever tried? No, I'm scared. Wait. Well, there you go. So am I. Really? We Maybe got that we should try it us. together. Well, then we would definitely fall off the bicycle. <laughs> You're thinking of a bicycle built for two. Daisy Daisy, that's the name of that song. Do you know that song? No. Daisy Daisy, give me your answer to I'm half crazy over the love of you. You don't know that song? No. Oh, it was very popular in the 1890s. I'm surprised that you don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's a song about... My grandmother used to sing it to me when I was a child. Oh. It was about a couple that went cycling on a bicycle built for two. Lovely. Yeah, good times. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> do you want any chocolate or anything? No, um... Do we have a little time left? Sure. Do you want to do a therapy session? Absolutely, but we have to take a commercial break. Oh, okay, sorry, I jumped the gun. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> I'm sorry, I rang the bell. That means we have to <laughs> means we have to speak German. Oh, okay.
Every time I rings the bell, we have to speak German. Did you speak German in some movies, the Bond movies? I didn't speak German, but I learned a little bit of German. I see. I can say really random things in German. Can you say any cuss words in German? Mm -hmm. Please oh. begin. Okay. <laughs> das ist Auf Wiedersehen. We'll be right back, everybody. We'll be right back. We're back. Welcome back, everyone. I'm here with Julia Stiles, who's uh, got a few problems she'd like to discuss mm. with me. I'm a therapist and also run a bar. The two. <laughs> Tell me about your childhood. What do you want to know about my childhood? It Did was you... happy. <laughs> it was? Yes. Yet you work in the performing arts. <laughs> True. <laughs> You seek the approval of strangers. That's right. Why? Uh, um, can we talk about dreams? No! <laughs> but this is, I'm, this is my therapy session. All I can right, talk about whatever fine. I want. Tell me about your dreams. Um, like most, okay, so psychoanalyze this one. Okay. The most recent one, uh, somebody had broken into my house. And I had to hit, it was a woman. Mm -hmm. I had to hit her across the head with a giant bottle. Yes. And that was kind of it. You are repressing your sexuality. <laughs> no. Pretty the sure. The bottle not. represents the penis, <laughs> and the woman represents the woman, and the house represents. A house. <laughs> Do you are, you, are you... Can I fire my therapist? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> no. Oh, me? Sorry, no, you can't fire me. <laughs> yeah, you. Wait, are you no, in therapy right now? Um, I go to therapy. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I'm a complete... But I'm a perfect human being, so I actually really don't need to go to therapy. Yeah. <laughs> me too, yeah. Once a week, I roll up to that woman's office and tell her all my stuff and... And then... I feel a little better. Yeah, well, I you I feel should. it's like house cleaning a little bit. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, just kind of getting into the dark corners and, you know, give it a good clean. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, like brushing your teeth. Yeah. <laughs> with, a, with a big giant brush. A soul brush. A brush soul for your brush. soul. soul. Soul brush was the name of the, one of the forgotten bands of Woodstock, I believe. <laughs> good night. We are soul brush. <laughs> soul brush. We rock. Well, we're done here. That's it? Yeah. Oh. Two <laughs> stars, everybody. Bye, 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 bye. guest is the culture reporter of the New York Times. He's the author of a new book, Mad as Hell. It's in stores now. Please welcome Dave Itzkoff, everybody. Dave Itzkoff. You look great, man. Thank you. That is like the most applause that a newspaper reporter has ever received. Oh, no, it come on. You're not just a reporter, you're the culture guy. I, I'm at, one of several. At the New York Times, the Thanks home the of culture. Yes, we like to think so. Yes, you do, don't you? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm intrigued by this book. I'm about 40 pages into it. It's about the making of Network. That's the, uh, the seminal yelling at the... Uh, That's right. Howard Beale, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm as mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. That's it was correct. great. I, did, I was surprised. Why were you fascinated by this? I mean, a whole book about this movie. Oh, well, because it's not only just about, you know, this crazy moment in 1976 when this movie comes out, but it's a movie about exactly what happened to television and to the media that I mean if you look at you know what television is now it's all a bunch of people looking directly into the camera maybe making things up off the top of their head <laughs> talking in slightly funny accents hey yeah. you you swanky New York bastard you got me turned around <laughs> no I um 
I'm, I'm interested because the, uh, that, the movie came out in 1976. Punk rock started in 1975. It feels like all popular culture went crazy yes. in the mid-70s. Yes. I mean, America was a very frustrated place at that time. And in the UK. Yeah. It, was, it was very bad there as well, I remember, sort of, yeah. kind of. <laughs> a well. big memory. Yeah. yeah. I, I was just being born myself, so I don't right. have any memories whatsoever. Right. I'm told that it was not just, you know, disco balls and cocaine and, you know, I mean, it, people were really uh, pent up about, you know, inflation and the end of the Watergate era and, you know, problems in the Mideast and, and oil crisis. Everything. Hippies, hippies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The hippies would not go away. No, the hippies right. were there and right. the New York Times driving everybody crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so you had this writer, Patty Chayefsky, who wrote a movie that was nominally about a television network that's kind of going bonkers, where they have a TV anchor who is losing his mind and they want to keep him on the air, make him go even crazier, and that'll drive up the ratings. But this becomes a kind of vehicle for all the frustrations that the, con the country is feeling at the time. Yeah, that, it's funny how that never actually happened in real life. Oh, no. Everybody got sane in the wow. US. Exactly. It's funny, though. It's very prophetic. This, uh, the movie, certainly, is very prophetic. The, the, uh, it, it's, it's a strange one. And I was kind of surprised to hear that the big famous speech was done on the first day of filming. Yeah, well, a portion of it is. I mean, the, the, literally, you know, the, they're... There are portions of it where you're watching Peter Finch sort of through a TV monitor in other people's houses or in the studio, and that was shot on the very first day. All right. Then a couple of days later, they shoot the real big scene, which is him, again, you know, right into camera. Mad I'm as mad as hell. But they only shot one and a half takes of that speech. Because he was ill? Uh, I mean, he kind of lost his mojo in the course of... He gave one huge performance of it. It took a lot out of him. Cindy Lumet, the director, said, okay, let's go again. They get about a minute into the second take, and Finch just kind of says, you know, I, I can't go anymore. And Lumet says, okay, fine. And, you know, seminal moment in American cinema and one and a half takes. Well, you only have to... You don't have to get it on the camera once, I guess. You know, I mean, a lot of these great... Moments in America, you know that scene in Goodfellas where they do the all oh, through sure. the kitchen, right? The tracking shot. Yeah, it's oh. one take, right? You well, can't... it's one continuous take, but think about how many times they had to shoot that to get it just right. They just did it that day. They didn't even rehearse. Is that true? No, oh. but <laughs> you see, you can say anything on TV; it becomes true. <laughs> oh That's no! What the movie no, you can say about. anything in the New York Times, yeah. and it becomes true. <laughs> you say stuff on TV; it's just crap going into the ether. That's all. <laughs> do you feel a great sense of responsibility? I mean, some of the stuff that you re report, and not only do you work at the New York Times with its, you know, venerated history, but also you're talking about a beloved piece of. Do we call it Americana? I suppose it is, isn't it? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Do you feel any kind of uh, any risk exposing yourself to other people's opinions? Does there are one or two on the internet who may, you know, disagree with anything you say Wait, at all? There are people who disagree with me on the internet. On the internet. I, I know. I know what you're thinking, Craig. The internet is a place for reason, discussion, and argument. I know. Exactly. I'm going to go there right after the show, and I plan to have a very frank discussion with these people. And do I you get Do you get involved in that? Because someone who does what you do for a living is going to come in for a lot of attack. And yeah. Kind of it, no, it's it's. It, I mean, I try to be careful with something like this because you are talking about you know a writer who passed away in 1981. I spoke to as many surviving people as I could, and I got access to his papers. So he's very much represented in those papers. But yeah, I mean, you are always thinking about you know, am I representing this person accurately? And and everyone will tell you that Patty Chayefsky was a very you know feisty, cantankerous guy. I mean, there are movie executives who literally got you know bowls of matzo ball soup thrown at them by him, and they are proud of this. They are thrilled that this guy did See, it. See, I would do that to him, uh, but he's... Uh, <laughs> too far away. <laughs> well, we can probably... Uh, we can order out for matzo ball. Yeah, yeah, we could probably get some, man. Yeah, that would be a good bet. We'd just throw matzo balls at him. <laughs> That's right, you, baby. <laughs> I'm as mad as hell. I'm not going to take it anymore. <laughs> So, uh, the last time I interviewed you, uh, no, you interviewed me, we were at the TV... Yes, the Paley Center. Yeah, you were good at interviewing you, like, I knew about things in my life and said, hey, that time you did that thing, I was like, whoa, hey, well, you know, I, I could just, never do that. I just Googled you, like, five minutes All right, I fine, yeah, that's good. That's the way I do it. And now the interviewer has become the interviewee. Yes, that's the, uh, that's the circles that you find in the windmills of your mind, Dave. <laughs> it's the, uh, it's Hakuna Matata, yes. my friend, the <laughs> circle of life. Uh, You're just a fount of wisdom tonight. Yes, right? I am, uh, apparently. <laughs> Not New York Times fount of wisdom, though, just a kind of small puddle of knowledge. <laughs> Not even knowledge, more kind of like a 
a damp cloth of gossip. <laughs> <laughs> so, how are things in New York, all right? Oh, you know, they've been rather chilly, but... Uh, yeah, it's a little bit, yeah, yeah. 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 We're, we're, dig we're digging ourselves out from uh, the, whatever the latest uh, polar vortex. Are we still talking about the New York Times, or are we talking about New York? <laughs> you know, I'm going to come back to the New York Times and discover my desk has been cleared off. Not at it. all. It's a great American institution. What are you talking about? If you, if you can't poke fun at the New York Times, then you're not participating. That's what I say. <laughs> uh, we're out of time, Dave. Uh, it's a very interesting book, though. Uh, you're a very interesting man. I'm glad you're here. Dave Itzkoff, everybody. We'll be right back. You did very well with us last night. You do it. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, all right. Singing their song Forget Me Not from their album available on iTunes. Playing us off the air, it's Roddy Hart and the Lonesome Fire. Roddy Hart and the Lonesome yeah. Fire. Of your heart Do I feature from the start Or is it just the bit 